and welcome to It's About Time on Think Tech from our downtown studio at the core of Honolulu. I'm your host, Becky Sampson, a professional speaker, author, and coach. And we're going to just jump right into our subject today, which is sustainable entrepreneurship and how does sustainability apply to you? So welcome, Les Harper, and he's the founder of the Global Sustainable Projects. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming in today. I was just, uh... <laughs> I'm here. There you go. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, I, I love the reason why, actually last week somebody had suggested me to talk to you because you have a lot of different projects that you're working on uh, as it comes to global entrepreneurship as well as sustainability. So kind of tell everybody where you're from because you're not from here. No. <laughs> the shirt so might give it away. But, yes. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Canada, Alberta, Canada. or more It's that accent that gave it away. <laughs> What's that, eh? It's the accident. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah, Alberta, Canada. I uh, live in Lloydminster, which is the border city. It's right on the border of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Um, I was uh, an entrepreneur, a businessman there. I had his made a dozen different companies going on at different times. Yeah. And uh, about 12 years ago, we sold our biggest company and decided that maybe it was time to do something a little different. So. On the beckoning of my wife, who, <laughs> loves who I know Hawaii. really well, yes, she's beautiful. She sure yes, she uh, she loves Hawaii and she loves the, the Aloha spirit, mm -hmm. and really felt impressed that there was something here for us. So mm -hmm. uh, we took the the long plane flight uh, from Canada to here, and uh, it, it's been an amazing experience. Wow, oh, that's awesome. And so what, so I mean, we're going to be talking about sustainability today, but what kind of got you into that field of sustainability? What, what drives that passion for you well, to it, teach people about it? It goes a long ways back. My, mm -hmm. my parents were, were frugal, for mm -hmm. want of another word, but at the same time, frugality also kind of says that you're going to make use of what you have. Right. Uh, it's the old saying, um, waste not, want not, make mm -hmm. or do or do without. Well, there's a lot of resources that we tend to use now as a single use. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of our biggest challenges in the world, and then specifically in Hawaii, is single-use plastic. The mm -hmm. idea that we just use it and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And our intent or the things that we try and teach or, or uh, work with uh, people is the idea that whatever you have has to be long-term sustainable. In other words, uh, what the project, the, the the business, whatever you have, has the ability to maintain itself on a long-term basis. Mm -hmm. That way, you're not going to run out of resources, you're not going to run out of money, you're not going to run out of land or mm -hmm. water or the mm -hmm. things that are essential. To it. it allows those things that are part of the business to just keep going through and uh, maintain the business. Right, so it sounds like you kind of grew up with that kind of attitude and outlook in life is not to waste, mm -hmm. but how do you take those resources and recycle them in a way that's going to be able to, to help the, the world? Well, first of all, you really have to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, one of the businesses I had back in Canada was used oil collection. So the used oil collection? collection yes. Wow. Okay. So that, that was taking the oil that's in your, in your van uh -huh. and uh, recycling it into another product that could be reused again. Mm -hmm. So. I did that for over 10 years, and, and you build this mindset mm. up where somebody else's garbage becomes your commodity. Mm -hmm. It has value to it. Mm -hmm. So you take, take it, and you, you make value out of it, and make it so that instead of it being a waste product, it becomes uh, useful, useful mm -hmm. and valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, you take a look at even garbage. Mm -hmm. Garbage that's unsorted is just a mess mm -hmm. and a problem where garbage or uh, plastics or different materials that are segregated have value to them. Mm -hmm. So the goal was is to get the oil before it became a spill problem, mm -hmm. um, before it uh, could become a problem, and gather up the little parts of it from all the different service stations and shops. And, and what would you use it for? Uh, it was basically a diesel fuel replacement. Oh, okay. So, so there's a process that it goes through to be able to, I, actually, as a matter of fact, I think my husband's friend does that just for a hobby. 
He does it in the back of his house. And you can. You pretty yeah. much can. Like uh, a lot of people talk about biodiesel, uh -huh. which is made from animal fats, mm -hmm. cooking oils, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. This is a little different because you're dealing with hydrocarbon. And there's mm. different materials in it, some that are somewhat hazardous. But it's just taking it, knowing how to deal with it, gathering enough knowledge and technology that you can uh, take the, those products and reuse them. Like our right. goal was to take the oil and to be able to make it back into the lube oil that we had dirtied right. and put into uh, to the reuse quick it. Groups. Yes. So what do you think is probably the biggest problem when it comes to people, when it comes to having that mindset? Because I, I do believe that we're in a society, we are very wasteful. Well, like, we really are. Yeah, we really do throw away a lot of stuff, and we don't think like that. So how do you change somebody that's maybe wasteful to, okay, how do we start shifting? Well, you know, what's the biggest problem to changing that? You probably have to get my mom on their kids because <laughs> she'll make sure that you use it for as much as you can. Yeah. It, it comes down to a paradigm shift. Yeah. Literally, the ability to just go... Why do I? Why do I need this? Mm -hmm. How many? How long will I use it? And what you know? What long-term value does it have? It's mm -hmm. kind of like uh, business goals. I was mm -hmm. in class this morning, and one of the things was how do you make how do you make decisions in business? And mm -hmm. that is to look at the long-term perspective and the consequences attached to it. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a bottle of water, mm -hmm. why are you buying it? Mm -hmm. If the tap has water in it, if you can bring a reusable bottle. Why don't you just do that instead of con contributing to the, the, the problem that's there? One, one well, I don't think we really realized when that first came out. I don't know about you, but when, when bottled water first came out, I thought, who in the world is going to pay for bottled for water? Yeah. And now it's like nobody yeah. drinks from the tap. Well, one of the strangest things I, I've seen since I've been on this island, and mm -hmm. no offense to anybody, but mm -hmm. when one of the hurricane warnings came out, everyone rushed. Walmart and all the stores to pick up bottled water. Yeah, rather than filling containers. Yes, out of their own taps. So, <laughs> That's so there, interesting. There was a panic that was created that was unnecessary mm -hmm. that could, could have eliminated the need for all those extra uh, bottles being filled with water and simply have reusable containers, put it under your tap in your bathtub, and yeah. you're good to, to work your way through. Well, at least I'm doing something right. Because my, my husband's really into a lot of emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of make fun of him because we have so many bottles. Not, I mean, not, not even, they're just drinking, uh, you know, out of like a, we buy a juice or something. Mm -hmm. And so he keeps these juice bottles and we always fill them with water. But we've got them all over the place, right? He doesn't want to throw any of those away. Well, they, they can become a problem if they're not stored right or don't have a place for them. But mm -hmm. back in uh, Canada, we lived on an acreage out in the country, mm -hmm. so sometimes the power would go out, sometimes we'd have problems with our well. And so we kept water set aside just to help us get through our basic necessities. Yeah, so like when you're working with somebody, what's one of the first things that you would tell them? Is it, is it water would be the first thing? First thing that, they need? Yeah. First, that's the most important element in our lives mm -hmm. is water. So, yeah, and it's easy to store. It's you know, you reuse the containers mm -hmm. that you perhaps would have thrown away. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it, our municipal water here is wonderful and, mm -hmm. and uh, stores easy. So that would be the first simple place. What's one of the other issues and problems that you see when it comes to sustainability? Um, this what, could be global, not just okay. on the island. Well, we, we do a lot of work uh, mm -hmm. in the country of Kitavis. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 33 islands. None of them are above six feet above sea level. So, Amazing. Yeah, they're just, they struggle. And the ones that I've been on, and they're all pretty much the same, are no wider than two football fields mm. and, you know, can be just a few miles long. Uh, Tarawa, which is the main island, is part of a group of islands that are strung together with causeways, but it, it at best is two football fields wide and 15 miles long, um, six feet to, to the ocean. And how many people live in that kind of space? 110, no, 60,000 on that group of islands, and then another 50 to 60 on all the other islands. But That's yeah. amazing. And I have to say, I went to your website last night and started watching all the videos and the projects that you have going there. And I, that definitely inspired me to want to like learn what you teach, because not only for myself, but to also teach other people sustainability, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a lot easier than, than most people think. It really right? is. 
It really is. Like, nature does it all the time. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is figure out how, how to replicate nature. And with our the one project you may have looked up is it's hydroponic. Uh -huh. we're, we're taking, again, where it really replies or really applies is in Kitabas, mm -hmm. where between that, that whole six feet, you've got uh, any water they may have, but at the mm -hmm. same time, there's graves buried there, or graves there. There's uh, pigs and the yeah. challenges attached to that. So they don't have a lot of land mm. in, to plant their own crops. Mm -hmm. And the lot the land is contaminated with salt. So we we developed uh, Edatai Kitibwe, who's one of my students that went mm -hmm. home to Kitabas, uh, developed a box that's basically bought at a Home Depot. Uh, we, we punched holes in the top and added on some other equipment. And, and the more important part that I saw in that is that you have to be able to put oxygen into the water. That's a bonus. That, okay, it's a bonus. It, you don't have to. One of the most. Uh, uh, one of the great systems that was set up was developed at UH, mm -hmm. uh, the Kratky system, and it can be just a, a still water system with air ventilation on top. We put the air pump in because, first of all, it just seems to accelerate the growth. It keeps, right. it keeps everything mixed in the water so that the plants grow that much quicker. Like, we're looking for a, a head of lettuce in 30 days, mm -hmm. and so it's got to be pretty optimum uh, nutrient level in the water, yeah. uh, sun, you know, everything's got to work together. So And it looks so nice and green. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, just a story in one of our mm -hmm. projects in Kiribati, a family called us up in a bit of a panic, and uh, they brought the Edutai over and showed them this beautiful mm. melon in, what, in their, uh, their their container. Yeah. And they didn't know what to do with it because they had never been able to grow anything like oh, that wow. in the island. So yeah. Eritai just said, get a knife, let's eat this thing oh. and, uh, you know, plant some more seeds and keep going. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a new frontier and it's something that uh, is, is stretching people, but at the same time, it has 25% uh, diabetes rate. In the yeah, that's I, I was really, I mean, obviously, you know my story, right, mm -hmm. of, of losing a lot of weight mm -hmm. and getting going from really unhealthy to healthy. It's really important to me to be able to help people get solutions to health problems. And so I really commend you for what you're doing because you're, you're helping a whole nation and a whole people um, become sustainable by their own efforts, right, and not relying on other other people to do that. So I want to talk more about that as we come back from the break sure. and, uh, and talk about how what every single person can do because there's, there's something that everybody can do as they're looking to make their life more sustainable when Absolutely. it comes to their health and, and other aspects. So, so we're going to be taking a short break. I'm Becky Sampson and we, you are watching It's About Time on Think Tech Hawaii. And we're talking to Les Harper about sustainable entrepreneurship. How does sustainability apply to you? Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners. Uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, see you soon. Mahalo. Hey, aloha everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us, and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. So we're back, and I'm Becky Sampson, and this is About Time. I'm talking with Les Harper on sustainable entrepreneurship. How does sustainability apply to you? Uh, so well, right before the break, we were talking about Kitabis, some projects that you're doing there. Like I said, I went to the website and looked at the videos and everything. I got passionate about it because um, any time that you can empower people 
in their own personal life, with their families, their communities, you change the world, Absolutely. right? And so you're going in, and one of the things, the problems with Kitabis is that, that you said that it's only six feet above the seawater, sea level, sorry. Mm -hmm. And so when they have disasters that come in, they, 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 their crops are completely taken out. But you're teaching them to use containers to build aquaponics. Yes. And they're to, to grow their own food. Well, that was aquaponics. We're doing hydroponics. Hydroponics. Oh, I'm sorry. Aquaponics is... It's so different. A little different. Okay. <laughs> so I'm learning. I'm learning. It's, so hydroponics. Yes. Hydroponics is when you put your nutrients into a water solution, and then your seeds are germinated above it, and the roots from those plants reach down into the water. It's kind of cool. It's literally, you can have roots that are 12, 14 inches long, and a big mat of it underneath yeah, the growing Yeah, I saw deck. that. It's just awesome. That's crazy. Aquaponics is the using fish. Basically, oh. you grow fish, mm -hmm. and the waste from the fish is put through a um, medium, mm -hmm. in other words, a uh, rock that has uh, um, microorganisms in them. Those organisms change the, uh, the waste from the fish into nutrients for the plants, huh. and then the water that comes back to the fish is, uh, is clean again. That's so interesting. So it's kind of what they call a symbiotic solution. Nice. Where one um, enhances the other's. Uh, and helps the other one. Yeah. So tell me some of the things that, I mean, obviously you're, you've got projects all over the world. Kitabis is kind of where you're spending a lot of your time. A lot of your time, yeah. Because there's, and I love that you're working with students that are here to mm -hmm. learn what they need to learn and they can go back to their countries and help. Um, empower their own people, Absolutely. right? Because they, they want to stay there in their yes. country. Oh, yes, very much so. But their health is going down the tubes because mm -hmm. they're having to rely on things that are being shipped in mm -hmm. instead of growing their own food. And uh, so what can people do, like, here? Or just an average, how do they create that? How do they create a sustainable living? Well, first of all, it's awareness. It's recognizing mm. that... Uh, First of all, we are on an island in the middle of the ocean. Yes. And, We're in the middle uh, of nowhere, but everywhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everyone wants to be here. Yeah. So um, to recognize that 90% of the food comes from somewhere else, and mm -hmm. that at the same time, we have incredible growing season that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the resources here that can potentially allow us to grow almost anything that we want right. to. So it's just a matter of starting small. Starting on something that's simple and doing doing it. Yeah. Go into Home Depot, go into one of your garden stores and just buy a pack of seeds. Read the back and put it in, you know, buy, find a bit of soil, uh, buy a bit of soil and just start growing something. And if yeah, it, for someone that, like me that, that is really, okay, I will say to you, Les, like, <laughs> I will say a year and a half ago, I, me and my husband did a garden. It was probably... I'd say 25 feet, it wasn't a garden, it was really a farm, 25 feet by, I don't know, 50 feet or something like that. And it, it completely died because we mm -hmm. left, you know, for a month. But I will say that I think, like you said, starting small and putting it in there and, and learning whatever it is they, mm -hmm. they need for that, because we have rich soil here Absolutely. that they, we don't have around the yeah. world. Well, and, and the thing is, in Kibbis, we do trainings, our Preemptive training is here mm -hmm. so that students can go to Kibbutz and help the people there. Mm -hmm. But it takes, we, we take one hour to teach people how to do hydroponics. So, and can they go to their web, your website? Because, I mean, I learn just by looking at it, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there's a little more than just the videos that are on there. What's your website again? Uh, our website is sustainable, globalsustainableprojects.org. .org. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's uh, Global Sustainable Projects, I believe, with our Facebook. So, Yes. We're happy to train anybody that wants to learn how to do hydroponics. Uh, we have students that, well, editize a good example. He didn't know what hydroponics was. Mm -hmm. He had no idea. And yet over a period of time, he killed a whole bunch of plants <laughs> before he finally started growing watermelon in Kerouac. That is amazing. How do they fit in those little things? Well, he's got this trellis where okay. the vine will grow up and then they just hang. Oh, okay. So and, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't grow in no, that little no, thing. Okay. No, it's too small for yeah, that. Yeah, but of course. lettuce, you can grow lettuce or Chinese And lettuce, cabbage. I think, can't you cut that off and use it and you still use the stem and it keeps coming? Yeah, or okay. just peel the outside leaves off and keep going. And, and let it go. Yeah. You know, there's such a wealth of knowledge out there. We like to use the 
University of YouTube. Mm. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. it's uh, an amazing source of information. A lot of my students that I work with, mm -hmm. if they're not sure about something and I'm not sure about something, I just send them to YouTube yeah. because everybody loves to show off their success. But one of the most important things, I think, is the message is that anybody can do this. Anybody can. And is it something that I can put on my porch or on my deck? Yes. And just start growing stuff. Pretty okay, much. I'm going to have to come tell you some of your classes. I'm really serious. <laughs> like, I really, I'm not one that can really grow very well, but I, I believe in it. And I eat a lot of vegetables. So if, well, you know. You should be growing your own vegetables. I know. Because I know. There's nothing more. There are, well, there are other things, but be it working in the soil and working with plants is very therapeutic. Therapeutic. So. It's just, it feels good to, to grow something. Our, our little patch where we are on the North Shore, we're now growing a thousand pounds of bananas a month, where uh, just a year ago there was almost none. What do you, what do, you do with all that? Uh, the students get a lot of them. Do uh, they? We give them to people. Those who come and work at the garden are allowed to take produce and, and fruit with them. Mm. So it's, uh, it's reciprocal. If you earn it, it tastes that much better. It, so I love that you said that because I was just going to say that my <laughs> sister is, she does some gardening. Mm -hmm. And she said when the kids, her, she has two girls, they're not teenagers, but she says when they're involved in growing the vegetables, they're more likely to eat the vegetables. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, if you're having a hard time getting the vegetables in, you better start gardening. And that's for me too. I'm, I'm giving myself that, <laughs> that kind of advice. And there is nothing that tastes better than it. A homegrown tomato, mm -hmm. you know, especially something that you literally saw rise up from the seed, uh, to be able to eat that and sink your teeth into it is. Just and so, what delicious. about? I know when we started our garden last, because my husband's much better at this than I am, mm -hmm. but he, um, we had a lot of weeds. Is is it not so much here, or do you have animals that eat stuff? Our secret is box garden. So instead of growing right into the ground, we build a little framework, just like eight by eight or six by eight, of uh, two by four, say a foot mm -hmm. high. And it seems, for whatever reason, that once you start, you put soil in a box, you eliminate. You don't put any liner or anything? No, we don't. Okay. In fact, we make a point of not putting a liner in because mm. we want basically the, the box of soil in the box to be a part of the soil underneath it. But our need to weed yeah. is minimal. Yeah. Where in those same areas, uh, there were open spaces that students used to farm, and it was machete time. I, I know in our carrots, they kept getting like pulled down by the, what are you, gophers or something? I was like, okay, why are we doing this? <laughs> well, the only thing about that size here is a mongoose, and they don't like carrots. Oh, the so mongoose. You're okay. Oh, okay. Those guys are crazy animals. Yeah. But uh, so the very first thing, I, let's just kind of recoup, I mean, re we say what we were saying before. Mm -hmm. But the very first thing you'd say is for anyone to be sustainable is to get their water source. Yeah. Right? If anything were to happen, we need to have clean water. Is good, very clean water. Yeah. You, can store, you can store food, but you don't need food. Um, you can go without food mm -hmm. for a few days. Mm -hmm. and it's water that you have to have for consumption and for hygiene. Beyond okay. that, then you can, some of us can live a few days without having to eat. <laughs> But uh, water is your most essential. So water is number one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you have any space, mm -hmm. and, and, and actually you can be in an apartment, yeah. you can, is that, I definitely recommend them go to your website, which is global sustainable projects. Projects. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah. And look at those videos that you have and the different things that you do. And then also, you know, look into the hydroponics mm -hmm. on YouTube to be able to get ideas of how to start setting up Box gardening. And just simply don't be afraid of making mistakes. Like, yeah. You know, we're, we're all learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's just simply step out of your comfort zone, take a chance, and uh, you, you'll be surprised how things will go. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is I love that you, that you bring up that it's looking at the resources that you have and then educating yourself mm -hmm. on those. Yes so that you can make progress. I mean, I've noticed that being here on the island, they don't do recycling like we did on the mainland. Well, that depends much. where on the mainland you're from, because in Hawaii, they do better at recycling than some places in the mainland. So how, really, so how can we get more involved in the community in recycling? Well, first of all, if you're, you're you know, a residential homeowner, 
Thank you. So the bin sitters provided by the city. Okay, Committee. so they do have. Yeah, okay. yeah they're out there. Uh, then there are depots. Uh, your high fives, put those things in a place that you can take them into triple uh, r or you know to the recycling centers to get some money back what's what's a high five i it, don't even know what it's that is a deposit on uh, drinking bottles oh. your water bottle that you buy or your soda i'll have it a five cent deposit on it. oh the other thing is lobby your local government to increase the uh, incentives on those sort of bottles and extend it to other products we have over 40 products in in uh, canada everything from tires to uh, drinking bottles that all have a deposit return system on it. And the recycling rate that we have there is, is much, much higher than most places in the world. My, so my little used oil was uh, a deposit return system. Oh, okay. So if we had almost, well, as close to 100% as we could, we could uh, recycle. And so edu ed education is really important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And just get aware of maybe in your county or your state and what what efforts they're making to be the recycling, yeah. um, and then how you can reuse the things and, that you have and make use of the of the systems that are in place. If they if they have a recycling center, take stuff to it. Encourage mm -hmm. other people to take it. Get your neighbors together. If it's not being used, they're they'll shut it down because yeah. it's, it becomes obvious that there's no value in it for their for their voters. And are those usually government assisted uh, programs? Often municipal. But do that, okay. Yeah, but. Uh, they can also, depending on the private. country and location, it can be assisted by uh, local or uh, federal government. Awesome. So how do people find you? And where, I mean, like, I know we gave you the website. You want to give your phone number out if, if they want you to come in and teach the hydroponics or if you want to get them involved or with the projects. My email's fine. It's, okay. Yeah. Uh, lgharper08 at gmail.com. Nice okay. and simple. Um, phone won't worry about phone, Facebook. I'm on Facebook, just Les Harper. L-E-S. Um, L-E-S, nice and simple. <laughs> nice. I know I call you Lester all the time just because I love nicknames, <laughs> and so I hope you're not offended by no, that. No, that's fine. I, I've, uh, in my younger years, when I was just a kid, the neighbor used to call me Lester B after one of the prime ministers of Canada. Oh. So that's yeah, a term of endearment. There you me. go. I, I think nicknames are endearment. <laughs> I mean, I think it's... It's endearing to me when somebody calls me by a nickname because, mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, it's kind of cool. But thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing your wisdom and, and uh, sharing with everybody the ideas. I know if, if you offer classes, I'm going to come oh, to them. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. I don't offer classes, okay. but my students do. Oh, because good. Because they are all, many of them are more qualified than I am now. Awesome. Awesome. And I can just go spend a minimal amount of money and start having my own lettuce. It'll take, right? you could do it for nothing. Absolutely zero if you want it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Anyway, I hope this brings you guys hope that you can also have a sustainable lifestyle as well. So thanks for joining us today. So we're out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. But I'm Becky Sampson with It's About Time on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Les Harper about the sustainable entrepreneurship and how does sustainability apply to you? We want to thank the broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who makes this show possible. And of course, I'll see you on Wednesdays for more of It's About Time on ThinkTech. I'm your host, Becky Sampson. Mahalo, everyone.